Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's been a minute, but this is Brian Tan, and here we are with another edition of Tan Talks. I'm joined. You know who this lady is. Every time we do Star Wars, she is the co-host. It is written in stone as if it came down from Mount Olympus itself. Katie Salidas. Katie, how the hell are you? Damn, what a good introduction. I'm good, dude. I'm good. How are you? Um, You know what? I'm feeling pretty good. We're here to talk Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yay. I've been so excited for this one. I have as been just... Have I. He's one of our favorite characters. Absolutely. I think everybody has, has a place in their heart for Obi-Wan. And yeah. uh, I was worried. I was worried going into this that that they were going to Awful. do a similar thing to him like they did to Boba Fett. Yeah. And they really haven't. They, they haven't. They, they've handled this. I feel like they've handled this way better than they did Book of Boba Fett. Because this is Obi-Wan show. Like, nobody is taking over the Obi-Wan show. It is Obi-Wan. And dude, Ewan McGregor, Ewan McGregor has been a part of Star Wars now 23 years. This is his 23rd year. And he just gets better and better and better. You and I grew up with Sir Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan. And when they announced an unknown here in the States, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan for um, Phantom Menace. He's perfect. He, like, at first we were like, huh? And then we saw him and we like, yep, perfect. That's Obi-Wan. And he has been Obi-Wan. The moment he was on the screen. Exactly. From the nanosecond, we saw him as a Padawan. And, and you just, did you notice? Did you notice? He's like, he's doing the mannerisms. Yes, he is. He is starting. To, and that just shows how much love Yo McGregor has for the character. He's studied Sir Alec Guinness from the moment he got the role. And he keeps bringing these aspects. Even just like, and so it's really great because what we've got we're finally bridging the gap between Obi-Wan in the prequel series to Obi-Wan in the parent series. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's dive just, in. Yeah. Let's, let's just jump dive right in. in. We because there's a lot to talk about. Three episodes worth. So we, we got to like really run through this. So, okay. Right. Episode one. Yeah. I have to, I have to say. Yeah. Cause you're good not... with the notes and stuff. I just go. This is the first time that we're really seeing what happened from the younglings perspective and from Reva's perspective. Now, what are your thoughts on the third sister, Reva the Inquisitor? What are your thoughts on her? I don't know what to think of her right now because she's too much of a loose cannon. Right. And and I can't I can't figure out what her motivations would be other than to move up the ladder, but every one of them wants to move up the ladder and be next, you know, be next to Vader's side. So why does she act so much more aggressive and, and skirt around all the rules when the others are some supposedly just as evil as her? Right. There's a lot of hatred in her heart. But we got to watch her because we don't really know what her motives are because it doesn't seem like it's just a, a pure power grab. Like There's something seems, more there. It's personal. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm wondering, though, too. How does she know that Anakin is Vader and Vader is Anakin? That's what I want to know. Because I thought that that wasn't common knowledge. That Yeah, that was my understanding, too. Unless that whole scene at the beginning was with her and she saw Anakin do slaughtering. Well, yeah. we know, well, we do know that that was her. We do know that that was her. And maybe she did see Anakin slaughtering and she was able to put two and two together. All right. So we open so, with the kids. So we open we... with the kids and then we go to Tatooine. So, yeah, we, we're, at, we're at Tatooine right now. We're getting an idea of what Obi-Wan is going through. His, his checking up on, you know, he's, he's getting parts that we find out are he's making a toy for Luke. He's, he's watching Luke from afar. And that was so cute. Him and the Jawa, that was adorable. That was funny. <laughs> and it's like, he knows the Jawa is ripping him off. Mm. And the Jawa doesn't even care enough to like try to deny it. He goes, yeah, You well. at least clean it. If you steal it from me, cleaning costs extra. <laughs> that was hilarious. And I really love the Owen, Obi-Wan interaction. And I never thought about it before, but how angry and hurt Owen is to have lost his brother 
Like we only saw them for a split second together, but even Owen said when he first meets him, well, I guess that makes us stepbrothers. Mm -hmm. So we see the love that Owen had for Shmi as a stepmother and the, the, the in turn, the love that he had for Anakin and how he is ready to brawl Obi-Wan. Well, he gets saddled with a kid that comes with a really hefty price tag. Right. Because if he is force sensitive, he's going to be hunted. Come for him. Right. So he, and, he has to protect this kid. And of course, you know, Obi-Wan's trying to protect the kid too, but Obi-Wan's protection comes from his force abilities, his, his right. prior life as a Jedi, which right. only makes more trouble as we see because the Inquisitors, they don't mince words. They come right down and they go, look, this is what we're doing. We're going to kill if we need to kill. We're going to torture somebody if we need to torture somebody. I mean, you saw what they did. They, they found that Jedi out in like two seconds. Right. He's hiding in the bar. Right. And, but Owen, to Owen's credit, man, Owen just stood there and he was like a champ, man. He was not playing games and he was not showing fear. I swear, if Owen were force sensitive, it would have been the Lar, it would have been the Lars freaking um, legacy because Owen Lars got that stiff back, that firm chin. He don't care. He looking at he looking at Reva like man. If I could use the force, I'd be whooping your ass right now. He understands the first rule of snitches get stitches. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> he absolutely does. But shout out, man, because Owen Lars don't care. Joel Edgerton, yeah. Shout out to getting him back because he's another one who you know he he pick, he picks up the role and he just made it his own. And has done an amazing job with it. And even though we don't see him on screen an awful lot, he you embodies, you get enough of him that it's it just works. So shout out to him. And I can't wait to see Aunt Baru on screen as well. It'll be nice to see them not looking like barbecue. So we're showing the what the, the Inquisitors are doing. They're hunting down the Jedi. There's a rogue Jedi on Tatooine. Yep. Trying to get help from from Obi Wan, and Obi Wan's like, "Dude, no, I'm no, out. I'm dead now." And My name is Paul, and that's between y'all. <laughs> Obi Wan is, I mean, it's 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 really tragic to see how far Obi Wan has fallen because he was this idealistic young Padawan, an excited young Jedi Knight, an enthusiastic an general, an excellent general, an amazing, powerful master, and now he's this broken man who just wants to be left. Alone. And, and you see that you see the the interaction with him and the boss who just ripped off the the employee in front of him yeah he and doesn't like, do a thing right it's like he wants to but it's like no what's the point he can't because he knows that if he draws any attention to himself yeah those inquisitors are going to be on him and so he's out of practice right and and you know you know working out yeah stay in practice it stays easy it stays okay you stop working out for a while. What happens that first workout you do? Oh, it's, it's going to kill you. It's going to kill. It, it kills you. And it's like your body remembers, but it can't do it. And it takes a physical and mental toll all at the same time. So Even same this, thing with the force. Yeah. He's not been using it for 10 years. And that's a long time. Think about where you were a decade ago. And imagine if there's something that you're great at and you stop doing it for a decade. You are not going to be as good as you were when you were doing it constantly. You're just not. And, and, and he turns into Eeyore. You yeah. Know, it, it's wrong, but not, not that it matters that it's wrong, but I can't do anything about it. Well, and you can see that the nightmares he's having, he's still like he's plagued with guilt. He's still struggling. He's not doing his meditation. He's not doing what Yoda told him to do, which is to figure out how to talk to Qui-Gon. So he's reaching out in the dark with no one else to, to hear him. Right. And even when he's trying, he just can't do it. And it, it, it's almost, it's almost a, tra it's a great tragedy almost. So he, he's going through all this. And then here comes Bail Organa. Guilt tripping. Hey man, my daughter's missing. So. This, this is where we have my first problem first with this issue. episode. Okay. Let, let's hear it. So, okay. I liked Leia in the first episode. I had, I, like someone, I, had someone, her. I had someone fuss at me talking about she overacts. Do you think she's No, an she's a kid. She's a kid being a kid. And that, that 
I'll get to that because that's episode two where she gets annoying. But they show, us, <laughs> they show us her. She's cute. She's precocious. The mom isn't acting like a mom at all. As a mom, I'm looking at her going, no, that, that my kid runs away when I'm trying to get stuff done. You better believe they're going to get a talking to, not a just, ah, not again. No, no Leia. You're going to get talking to, that. especially if we're on a schedule. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so she's cute, though. She's cute. She is. She's so sweet. I just want to give her a hug. She gets kidnapped. The parents call Obi Wan. How the flee. How the fuck they get a hold of him? Right. I mean, he's not even supposed to be able to be called, but okay, they got a hold of him. And when he didn't agree, he shows up, but doesn't take Obi Wan with him. Makes him ride public transport. What the fuck is going on here? Number one, why are you giving up your man's position? Here's uh-huh. the thing. You are a senator in the Galactic Empire. People follow you, you around. Yeah. You don't think you being followed, my dude? Come on. Bail. Bail. Jimmy Shows Smith. up on his fucking doorstep and then doesn't even take him with. That, that was the not, other side. It's like, really? And what, he's not even. by public transport now. Right. For real, dude? Seriously, you making me take a Pat bus. What? I got to ride Greyhound? Dude. Come on. And then you're not even, like, you don't even bother to try to hide your identity. You're not wearing a traveling cloak. You, you're not, you don't have a fake beard on. You don't have, come on, man, this is a galaxy far, far away with technology trillions of light years ahead of ours. You mean to tell me they don't have some good disguise software? You can't put on a pair of glasses and a funny nose with a little mustache. You, you can't fake the little Hitler mustache to, 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 to hide who you are. You can't put on a mask. Michael Myers wears a mask. Jason Voorhees wears a mask. Jimmy Smith can't wear a damn mask. Come yeah, on. I, I had a problem with that. That that threw me off. I got a little bit of an issue with that as well. And it, just, it felt it felt cheap. And it was it was like an unnecessary error. Absolutely. I didn't understand why they had to do it that way. That that really right. made no sense. And I get that they're trying to show that it, it took a personal touch to get him to really you know, get out of his shell, but there was a, uh, there were other ways he could have done that. Well, and here, and someone else brought, take the trouble to get there. Give your boy a ride. Seriously, at least kick him up a couple of bucks. But then now, what do you think of this? Does this not, unless they do a wipe of Leia's mind at the end of the series, does this not kind of interfere with the whole Leia seem to not know Ben? in a new hope because mm-hmm. because her message to him you served my father during the clone war so she's talking like she doesn't know him like he's just someone from stories but they're having this moment this relationship you know what i mean yeah. like they're spending time together so does that not sort of throw off her communication to obi-wan like how are you going to forget this guy yes and no because he's going by ben for most of the time Obi-Wan is very rarely said around Leia. It's just Ben. And she's 10. How much do you remember from being 10? A good bit. I mean, you might remember faces. You might remember some feelings of of activities you did. But do you honestly remember, like, exact events from when you were 10 years old? I think the only thing that I fully remember when I was 10 was my 10th birthday. I got Mike Tyson's Punch-Out and G.I. Joe the movie on VHS for my birthday and the NES Advantage. That's what I remember. So I so, think they're playing okay. off the childhood memories. So, even, so, even, so you think that 10, 12 years, because you figure Luke and Leia are about 21, 22 in A New Hope. Late teens, early 20s. Mm-hmm. So you think that that deck, so all right, I, I can buy that. I can buy that. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. It, it's it's not a perfect it's not explanation. Exact. But it's not exact. You can you can yada yada your way through that one. I guess so. I mean, I figure even though she's force sensitive and very into, she could even be talking to him as if, well, you may not remember me, but you served my father during the Clone Wars and blah, blah. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 We're on the same page. Okay, Katie. Katie. Okay. Okay, Katie. Uh-huh. L- little bit of letter, Kenny, for you. Okay, Kenny. Kenny, okay. <laughs> All right. No, you, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. All right. So, so the, the episode ends with Obi Wan being forced out of retirement to come and save Leia from Flea and the 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 Wish.com version of Red Hot Chili Peppers. 
the uh, the blue the blue green um the, the blue green zucchini people we'll call them <laughs> with 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 um like Roy Hiatus and um you know I can't remember the other guys' names but it's the fake version of the Red Hot Chili Peppers for sure and we find out in episode two that Reva hired them to kidnap now Reva is really smart because she knew that Organa and, and Kenobi had a relationship. And if anything was going to bring Kenobi out of hiding, it's kidnapping Organa's kid. That's, that's kind of smart. That's the, the... That's problem number two? Yeah, because if she knows if there's a record of Obi-Wan and Leia and Bail Organa... Well, not Leia, just Organa. That there's... No, well, because she said that there was a connection between them. Like everyone knew that Obi Wan and Bail Organa had a friendship. Friendship, but it was like a professional because Jedi's don't have attachments. True, that's the but that's as the thing, but, right? And but here and here's my argument though. Obi Wan worked with Bail Organa more than he worked with anyone else other than Anakin Skywalker. So you could maybe think. If anyone knows where he's at, it's Bail Organa. Even though we can't come right out and question him and hardball him. Later? Ten years? I mean, if you're if you're desperate to find a guy, you turn over even the most highly unlikeliest of stones. I mean, was that the reason why he still had a direct line? Because they've been chatting for the last 10 years? I don't think they've been chatting. I think that, I don't even think, I think that because even when that message came through, Obi-Wan seemed shocked. So I think Bail contacting him, I think Bail has kept tabs on Obi-Wan and Yoda without them knowing, hmm. just in case shit went sideways. Okay. And um, so I think that Reva was in this state where it's like, if anyone's going to know how to contact Obi-Wan, it's Bail Organa. It just has to be. He's really, because the way they sort of show us, Bail Organa is the only real influential remnant of the old republic that has a say in galactic empire politics so i can understand why she would attack him how far are we from rebels um i believe rebels happens a few years after this because there is another senator in rebels that ties back to a new hope and i can't remember her name for the life of me but there there is a other senators that are still kind of let me go let me go to disney plus because i know disney plus actually has a star wars setup that has it in continuity order all right star wars timeline in order this is how it's this is according to disney plus so this is official phantom menace attack of the clones the clone wars including final season revenge of the sith bad batch which i can't wait for season two solo obi-wan Rebels. So Rebels comes after Obi-Wan. Okay, so then there is still another senator out there that's just as right. But uh, much of but, a loudspeaker for the opposition. The However, Obi-Wan didn't have as much of an attachment to that senator. No. It no. was still Organa. So I can see where but Reva would Jedi, make... Jedi, though. Jedis don't have attachments, and he was the good Jedi. He followed all the rules. But if anyone... but. Bail, Bail Organa would be that weak link. Yeah, I mean, I I, I see the where the connection could be made, and I could see Reva going, "Oh, I found something nobody else was able to spot." And yeah, because nobody else thought gun. of that. No one else thought of that. Yeah, I I can see that, but I feel like it's almost too much of a tell that somebody knows Luke and Leia are out there. Because I think well, no one knows. No one knows about Luke and Leia. They just know about the organa obi-wan it's not connection. hard to track if you you make that connection with well, Bale and well and you obi -Wan. think well you figure Bale would have perpetuated number one no one knew padme was pregnant and no one knew she was having twins okay how how and then they said coruscant how did no one know well maybe padme they knew was pregnant well maybe they knew that she was pregnant with a child not two and yeah. they put out there that she lost the child when she died and and leia knows she's adopted too right like it's been and, it's public knowledge so well, where'd they get the baby who knows that that's what i'm saying knows. there's a lot of loose ends that could easily be followed 
if they slip up with some details. Well, I think also Anakin knew that she was pregnant with a boy. They didn't know, he didn't know about Leia. So I, 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 I just, I really feel like, okay, if they adopted a little girl, it just happened to be a little girl. Okay. But at the same token, if Bail Organa is going to call anybody, it's going to be Obi-Wan. It's not going to be Obi-Wan tripping over himself for Bail. It's going to be Bail. I need help. I'm going to call the one guy I know that can help me. That'll be Obi-Wan. It's not Obi-Wan is going to run to Bail's defense. It's Bail's going to go to him for help. And if Bail goes to him for help, which he did, yep. that's how Reva's going to catch Obi-Wan. Not that Obi-Wan is going to get caught slipping because of a connection to Bale, but Bale's connection to Obi-Wan. Bale slipping He's is what's going to get, yeah, Bale is the weak link, not Obi-Wan. So that that's my thinking. And I think that's kind of genius of Reva okay. because, yeah, the, the, the other, the Grand Inquisitor and um, Fifth Brother wasn't thinking about that. So, and shout out to um, my man um, Han from Fast and the Furious being in the Star Wars universe. Shout out to him as well. because And I hope they give him more to do than he did in the Fast and the Furious other than getting hit by Jason Statham. Retcon! So, so Obi-Wan goes well, out you've there. Seen, you've seen Rebels, right? Yes. Okay, so you know what happens to some of those Inquisitors. Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. And I'll tell you the truth. This is also, we get our first... Um, I'm trying to, like, I'm so terrible with names today. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But then we run into, I'm trying to find, there we are. Here we are. I'm trying to find the guy's name because I was so excited when I found out that Kumail Nanjiani was going to be in this. I love him. I love him so much. I loved him in Eternals. I feel like he was not used enough in Eternals. If you haven't watched Murderville, you need to watch his episode of Murderville on Netflix okay. because it's effing hilarious. Shout out to Shane Wilson for um, bringing that to my attention. So Obi-Wan meets Kumail, who's pretending to be a Jedi, and we think he's just some con artist. Oh, wait, we're on episode two now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, he runs into Kumail. After finding um, some that was fine, so ridiculous, it really was. But I mean, it goes to show how somebody can fake being a Jedi. It and was well played, well very played. well. Although very I have well to admit, played. at first I thought he was setting those people up to to uh, be to caught, die. and I was really yeah. worried about that. But he was really doing a good thing, and I, I really hope that he found a way to survive so we can see him again. Do you think but, he survived? No, no, I don't. I think this is a one and done. But if it's, but if it is, it was very heroic because Reva don't seem like she's someone that's going to leave prisoners. She, she's not going to leave prisoners. She, she's a take them all. She, she's a, a take it or leave it. And walk away. Yeah. I think she's, I think she's gone to the Vader school of sipping because yo, and we'll talk about Vader in episode <laughs> that's, that's three. Episode, okay. Well, we did get a shot. The closing uh, shot on episode one was Vader in the back. Yeah. Tank. And I'll tell you the truth. Now, I believe it's, is it? It, I think it's episode three that we see him getting put together at the very beginning. Yeah. He's getting yeah. put together like a Lego. That looks painful. You see the four spikes in the chest plate? And oh, I was like, e. I'd, be in a, I'd be in an internal bad mood too. Yeah. No lie. I would be in an internal bad mood too. And I mean, do you blame him for being as dark as he is? Mm -mm. And when Vader shows up, number one, I really love the connection before we talk more about Vader. The we, we gotta finish episode two though. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You know what? Because episode three is so much better. It's, episode you know, three is such a great episode. Episode one, good. Episode good. three, good. Episode two was mm, campy. Very. And and there were I had another big please, issue please, please. on that one. So we, we get to see Obi-Wan use the force for what we assume is the first time in like a long years. time yeah he can barely hold like he is way the hell up on a roof with three people shooting at him and and reva going Go ahead, across man. yeah she's going Yo, across these leia should be, like, leia should be gwen stacy so <laughs> leia falls 
Obi-Wan uses the force and slowly sets her down. Nobody's shooting this whole time. There's Riva. And then poof, two seconds later, he's on the floor. He, he's on the, the ground level talking to her. Like, um number one, Leia should have Leia should have suffered the same fate as Gwen Stacy in Amazing Spider-Man. I'm sorry. Leia's neck and back should be dust. She was also really annoying in that that episode, not because she was overacting, because she was being a kid. Yeah, honestly, and doing I, I, the little kid annoying thing that drives moms. You all know this drives us all crazy, especially when we got things to do, we got places to go, and we cannot have holdups today. For the love of God, just eat your snacks, be quiet, and follow along. There are those days where you just you cannot have the holdups, and here is Obi Wan walking through a city he doesn't know. With who knows who following him, he's already pissed off a few people, and he's got this little 10-year-old brat questioning every single thing he says, Seriously. not listening, making him buy an extra pair of gloves when you know he doesn't have money. True. The guy's making less than minimum wage on Tatooine, okay? All he gets to eat is green bread. He has the patience of a saint. Oh, I would have forced choked the shit out of him. <laughs> I was, I seriously, by the end of that episode, my eyes would be amber because I'm like, you know what? Shut the <laughs> fuck point, up. I, I was watching it with somebody and at one point I was like, knock the kid out and drag her along. Just, it'll be faster. <laughs> you know what? Put your lightsaber like right by her head and ignite it so you can take some of that hair off and she could have a permanent bald spot to know to shut the hell up. <laughs> A little chloroform or something. I know they got some, some some spice or something that'll work. Just knock her out for a little bit. So she, she said, "Give her some spice." They've already established that spice is essentially heroin. You want them to get get the kid shot up with some black beauty powder. <laughs> Look, when it comes to you're gonna die if this kid gets found out and you get found out, you do what you gotta do to keep everything on the down low. Seriously. Sorry, just you know, no, you're we're not trying wrong. to keep this kid safe, and we're trying to get her home, and she's being a brat. And yeah, you know what? <laughs> we do what it's we gotta do. Dude, I'll tell you what, anytime a little kid, anytime someone starts acting up, I'm going to give them a Snickers. And they ask why I said, because you're being Leia in episode two of Obi-Wan. <laughs> and, and to her credit, the, the, the actress but is adorable. She really she is. Was playing the kid as the kid. I mean, she, she was being an entitled 10 year old. That's exactly yeah. what she was being. And she's a very young 10 years old. That is what a young 10 year old will do. Yeah. So kudos. And that yeah, was I got a 10-year-old and an eight-year-old. Yes, that is what they do. Yeah. And kudos to Obi-Wan because some things just don't leave. He is the patience of a Jedi. That's now, for sure. When we get to episode three, the roles reversed a little. And I thought that was kind of fun. I, I, I enjoyed that Obi-Wan was fucking up and Leia picked up the slack. Right. We started to see a lot of Carrie Fisher, what we got from Carrie Fisher. But I love how he sort of, because we see how out of practice he is. But at the same token, he's able to make it work when he messes up. You called her Lair. That was her mother's name. It's been really hard. On oh, us. that was so sad because you knew he was talking about Padme. Oh. I, start, I had a tear. I had yep. a tear. And that just goes to show the chemistry between Neil McGregor and this young lady. He's a and good just, actor. And how great he is. He is so amazing at what he does. And you can actually see the stormtroopers empathizing with him. We've never seen that out of the stormtroopers before. They're usually just the mindless shock troopers. Mm -hmm. the, the, they're the mindless cannon fodder. But this time around, it was different. Speaking of, back to episode two. Mm. Did you see? Did you see one of the clones? Oh, yeah. Panhandling yes. for money. Yeah. I love that the clones, I love how we're starting to get the clones in a lot of things and we're seeing how life was not that good for them. Yeah. So oh. awesome. Now, Does that mean we're going to see Rex though? Do you think, think we're going to see Rex in this series? We may because he was in Rebels. And I had someone, now I had someone mention, and I, I heard this on a YouTube video and I can't remember, I think it was the, uh, the one of the Star Wars channels, not the official. But they think that Wrecker might have been the droid. That's but, what I was hearing too. You probably watch the same channels I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it I, wouldn't surprise me if it was. I would like that because that droid did not act like a droid. And he was right there all. to pick him up at the end. So. But I really wonder. I, that, that really makes me wonder what's what the clone, what these got, what the Bad Batch have gone through. 
Like, is Wrecker the only one left standing? But that also begs the question, though, is it fan service putting him there? Or is there a reason he's there pretending to be a robot that can't talk? I mean, I'm going to call, I'm gonna call yeah. it. Wrecker is the last surviving member of the Bad Batch. And he got horribly disfigured and hurt. So he ain't, he can't talk, but he's working with these rebels because that's all he can do. So that's why he's doing what he's doing. Okay. And so I'm thinking we're going to get a season two because there's also a time jump between season one of Bad Batch and season two. Mm -hmm. So I think that, I think season two may be the last Bad Batch season because of Obi-Wan. Okay. Unless, well, no, because depending on how big the time jump is, if it's only like two years, then we still, we can still have eight years worth of Bad Batch stuff happening. Because Obi-Wan from, Obi-Wan from episode three is 10 years. It's a 10 year gap. Mm -hmm. And it's 10 more years until, well, nine, yeah, almost 19, yeah, nine more years before episode four. So, yeah. I think that's what happens. So I think we might, if we get another three or four seasons of Bad Batch, we're going to discover some real bad, if this is Wrecker, some bad stuff happened with the Bad Batch. But how about Leia running off on her own, making this woman go to try to save Obi-Wan? Because Vader, yo, which I think that Vader's display in Rogue One was straight up G. But this display here is still straight up G. You got G1, G2 right here because, yo. He was evil. He was He was scary. Simple, just evil. Well, he terrifies me in Rogue One. It's something about, it's just they look into the shadows and then you just go, and then I'm like, I think I just peed a little. But in this, yo, he just shows up. Boom, boom, yep. drag, 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 crunch, yep. because he's trying to draw Obi-Wan out. And Vader is just housing Obi-Wan, drags him through flames. I'm like, God, damn. A little bit of payback. Little bit little of payback. Bit. And you know what? But here's one problem that I had in A New Hope. When I left you, I was the learner. Now I am the master. Bro, you're the master right here. You are the master. Yeah. Maybe Obi-Wan will teach Vader something during this series. I think that, that's a good point. Maybe that's what he'll, maybe that's how they're going to play it off is he's going to teach him something because I think, and, and I've heard this theory a couple of times too, and I kind of agree with it, that the reason Vader let him go. Because he no wants reason. to make him suffer. Yes. He wants to make him so break him. I would want to do that. What's the best way to what's the best way to break your enemies? Break their spirit. Mm -hmm. You break their spirit, you break their spine. If yeah. I were Vader, you know what I would do? I would I would have done what I did, and then I would just find ways to torture him. Mm -hmm. Like Bail Organa would already be dead. Yeah. Like I would seriously. I would seriously now granted, there's only if, if there's a way that you could contact Obi-Wan like get him a DM or something, I would catch Bail Organa and I would use the force to torture him Oof. and make Obi-Wan watch. Oh. And, here, and here's what I would do. I would have him tied down wearing nothing but underpants, right? And I'm talking like bikini briefs. And first thing I do is I use the force and I pull each toenail out Ow. one at a time. Ow. And then fingernails. And then, and then pubes. And then chest hair. And then the hair, I pull it all out, one individual hair at a time. And I make it last to really, really mess with, you know what, let me stop. Because if one of my enemies is found missing with no fingernails, toenails, or body hair, people are going to be looking for Brian Tan. Yeah, I, I got to stop it. I got to stop this. <laughs> but no, if I'm Vader, like a lot of people are like, why would Vader kill him right then and there? And I heard this said. That's too and easy. I yeah. Vader is a more patient, dangerous individual. I don't even want to call him a person because he's not even a person at this point. You don't suffer for 10 years in that suit. 
and so just think, get an instant gratification moment. No, you're going to slowly break your your enemy, savor every single morsel that of their is sadness. Sure. That and is sure. then then you kill them at the end. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, that is your that that is when you get a burn and when you put that aloe vera on for the first time. It's like, oh. That is Vader's, uh, like, can, like I, I guarantee you, like, I don't know if Vader has any sexual prowess after his accident. I don't think he has the equipment anymore. But I guarantee you, if he if, if he is a eunuch, I guarantee you, the Force gave him a fake wood. <laughs> like, there, there was a little bit of a pokey poke out of the <laughs> pants of that outfit. And it's like, whoa. Oh, yeah. Fair okay. enough. Fair yeah, enough. the Force is really strong with this one. Wow. I mean, just the, the way that he ignited that, that field of fire and then just slowly dragged him through it. He was like, having so much fun. Oh, yeah. And I could just, yo, Hayden Christensen. Oh, that little that little snippet we saw when they were, were walking through the, the, uh, the desert planet we area, see whatever. Dark side Vader oh. without the suit. Got chills. Hayden Christensen is Anakin and he is Vader. Mm -hmm. He is. And all the hate this man has gotten is so unfair. Because yeah, he, I and I forget why he he got so much hate initially. I mean I, I get that it was the character that was annoying because Anakin was he was annoying. whiny. But and I and I take the Kevin there's a Smith. reason for that. And I take this Kevin, I'm of the Kevin Smith school, the most powerful dude in the galaxy with all that hate and anger. Yeah, he's going to start as an emo kid. But you also think about it, Anakin, Anakin is the antithesis as to why the, the Jedi do not take people at a certain age. Yep. That is why. So, no, Anakin, can you imagine for the first nine years of your life, you are so loving and emotional and caring, and then you are forced to abandon every the one person that you love more than anything. And then you're taught to stifle your feelings. Stifle them. When you know that you need to do something for the greater good, and yeah. you're forced to, like, yeah, it's going to drive you nuts. Going mm -hmm. to the fact that you're also in puberty? Bro, No. Yeah. You can't. It is impossible. The Jedi are just as cruel as the Sith. They, they are. Yanking kids from their parents and basically turning them into robots and following dogmatic views. Dude, the Jedi are not the heroes. They, I mean, they have their reasons for it. Yeah. You know, it's the whole superhero trope. If somebody figures out your secret identity, then they go after your family. Right. So I get I, why they do that as their practice but yeah they shouldn't have taken anakin he was too old he already had attachments to his mom yep and, and attachments to padme attachments well that's the thing to the, everything. those those extra attachments are to fill in the gap where his mom left yeah if and, he if he doesn't leave his mom palpatine is not able to manipulate him the way he did because yep. you know he already had dad issues and Qui-Gon dying, Qui-Gon was the closest thing he had to a father, and then he's stolen from him. Mm -hmm. And now here's this dude that's been acting detached from you for the whole time. Now he's going to train you? Although they did have a good bond. They, they, did. they did. develop a good bond. But yeah, and then there it is again. Every bond that he has ever developed has been ripped from him in some way or another. And right. he's constantly trying to plug a hole that, that he should have never had in the beginning. Right. It was too old. That right. was, Yoda was right. Too old to begin the training. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So as we bring this to a close, Reva, we assume, has caught young Leia. Oh, no. Reva is really good at what she... Now, this is what pisses me off. The next person that refers to Reva as a Mary Sue, I am going to force pull their pubes out of okay, their body. Why? Now that I haven't heard. Why are they referring to her as a Mary Because Sue? of how powerful she is, I guess. Well, yeah, she's had years of training. Here's the thing. People are calling Reva Mary Sue the same way they call Rhea Mary Sue. But y'all ain't got no problem with Anakin Skywalker being as powerful as he is right at the jump. Yeah, no, Rey had no training whatsoever, and she immediately was able to use the force. No. But we Reva also found out why. As a youngling, 
and right. then was taken in and tortured and you know turned to the dark side. She's been using the force since she could walk. Right. And the thing is, though, and I'm still going to back for Ray. The fact that she is a clone of Palpatine. That was the stupidest storyline. It is. It is. It's a. It's a shitty storyline. I still have not watched Rise of Skywalker, but it is canon now. I so know. With her, so with her being a clone of Palpatine, she's obviously going to have a latent Force ability. It's kind of like. So here's the thing, then. Then you can't be a fan of Darth Revan and KOTOR, because here's the thing. Revan had his entire identity wiped away. He started with a fresh slate, but he still was force sensitive, still powerful in the force and mastered the force in a few weeks. So if you've got an issue with Reva and an issue with Rey, then you cannot applaud and cheer for Revan. You can't because it's the same thing. Revan had every single aspect of his ability of the Force stripped away, but somehow, some way, the Force found a way to make him a bad, make him slash her a badass. That that's my only point. So, and I think that a lot of people, their hatred toward um toward uh the the actress who plays uh Reva, who I know her name, I think it's Moses. Um, I thought she did an awesome job i think she's she an amazing as hell she absolutely is and i believe that the hatred towards her and i've seen a lot of people on twitter trying really 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 hard moses ingram is is her name and she is amazing as Rira, the third sister she is absolutely amazing and i'll tell you something right now the people that are sitting there on twitter these toxic ass female woman hating fanboys. They're only hating on her because number one, she's a woman. Number two, she's black. And I don't care what justification you try to use. That is your problem. And you need, and you and McGregor is right. You're not a fan of Star Wars. We do have to talk about another problem too. Please. That just reminded me because Reva stabbed the Grand Inquisitor through the stomach with a lightsaber. Yep. We know in Rebels, he doesn't die here. So what are they, how are they going to yada yada their way out of this? I think maybe it's another, there, there's someone of the same race. Oh no, no, don't. No, you don't think swap. that? No, All right, so, so then the Grand Inquisitor used to be a Jedi protector. He was one of the like really powerful Jedis that turned so, away. So maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's. Obviously maybe, he's not dead. Maybe they, just think, maybe they just think he's dead. She thinks that he's How dead. are you going to survive a lightsaber through the belly? Um, how are you going to survive Force Lightning? I mean, granted, Vader didn't, but Luke did. I mean, that that's... They could have done it another way, but I think the, the stabbing like that... It, it's the same thing with the Darth Maul, who sliced in half, and yet they found a way to bring him back. I don't like when they do those mm. unbelievable bring back a character. Pardon me, what, what if he just has so much... I mean, it could be something in his physiology. It could be just his connection to the dark side. and the he's, hate, he's super strong. The, his connection to the dark side, the hate that he has, the pain forced, you know, he, he, he willed him. Maybe he willed himself to live. If you, I don't know. That, that, that's something that they really got to work their asses They're off. They're going to have to do something because we know in Rebels, he does not die until Rebels. So we got years before the Grand Inquisitor's dead. And then right. if he does come back, that's going to be an interesting little uh, discussion little there between those two. <laughs> now, here's the thing. A lot of people are saying, wow, there's no way she should have been able to do that. But if you're overconfident and you think that one of your subordinates can't do something, they can still shock you. Just oh, yeah. because you're a powerful force user does not mean that you're omnipotent. You're, you're I would omniscient. Think it's almost expected, given that they're evil. That's how you move up the chain usually. Yeah, but I think, but how stupid on him not to anticipate something like that. But at the same token, look at some of these tragic news stories that we get where a gun was left out and a kid accidentally shot their parent. The parent's not going to expect their child to pull the trigger. It just sort of happens before they can do anything. Don't leave a loaded gun out. No, you don't. Well, you also don't let, you don't leave loaded lightsabers out for impetuous ass youth to stab you with. I get it. I get it. So maybe it's not even so much how powerful Reva is. Maybe it's just the Grand Inquisitor got caught slipping, and it happens. 
I mean, she's already shown her hand. She right. is going Multiple for the times. top. Right. She doesn't give a shit what anyone I, says. I seriously think that she took advantage of his arrogance. He thought there's no way this youngling is going to take me down. It just can't happen. She's like, Psh, bitch. That's guess what? what? Guess what? Lightsaber to the See, cut. Now, that's the thing about being a villain. They have a horrible retirement policy. <laughs> you have to always expect that somebody's going to try and off you if you are working for the evil side. Pretty much. I mean, like, come it's on. Pretty, it's pretty safe to say that the only time a villain is quote unquote anyway remotely safe from other villains in the Star Wars universe is if you're Vader. But then again, not even so because Galen Malik went after him. Even the Huts were pretty untouchable and they wouldn't even mess with Vader. Right. And it took it took Leia in her freaking metal bikini to choke his ass out. He had that coming. He really did. He had that coming. He really did. And then some. Like honestly, I bet you if if he had an actual orifice in the humanoid sense, I'm pretty sure she probably would have just shoved something up there for good measure. <laughs> just to say F you. Because I'm sorry. Nobody puts Leia in a freaking bikini. Although that but that's been like every every boy's like fantasy since then. Yo, I'm not going to lie. Uh-huh. Sharon got herself a Leia S bikini one time. I was going to say, that is a very popular Halloween costume. And you know <laughs> what? I'm not I'm not putting too much of, of my business out there in the street, and I'm not telling tales outside of school. <laughs> but that shit ain't last too long. She only got to wear it once because I kind of got a little bit overexcited. See? I'm just saying. See? So, but so episode four, we're going to see that this week. And we'll be back next week to record it and it'll, but I'll tell you the truth. What I really hope to see, I really want to see, now we can't see more as much of Vader as we would want to. You got to save it. You got to hide it. From what I heard, we're getting flashbacks. And I'm all for that. I want to see more Bridges of the Gap. Yeah. Um, so but, that, that'll be interesting. We need to figure out what's going on with Leia. Yeah. Um. I, I kind of wonder, you know, she's shown her hand. She's a pretty smart little kid. She's an empath. She can be annoying as fuck when she wants to, and she can also be pretty damn quick. So how is she going to manage? <laughs> and she's very empathic. She's very, she's very good at what she does. She's very, very amazing. I can't wait. Um, I think this, I think this Obi-Wan series, you, you know, you and I talked about this months in advance. I think that we're, I think that we can really be comfortable of loving Obi-Wan. We're not going to get a Book of Boba Fett um, reminder. I really don't think we are. And I think this, I think that this is going to be a good sort of a, a single series, I think. I don't think this needs a second season. If they give us- It depends us on where they go. It depends on where they go with it. Because I, I, I can see them filling in a lot of gaps because not only do they have to deal with the Leia situation- but he's also got to, um, if Luke. you look back in the comics, there's some issues where he actually has to save Lars. And he has to um, save so Luke. So he's still got to protect, he's still got to protect Luke. So there's some other stuff that they can do. And, so I, and I'm always on board. Where they're going to go. And I'm always on board for more Ewan McGregor. Next week, <sighs> we're going to come back more. We're going to be talking episode four. It yes. won't be near as long because it won't be one episode instead of three. So make sure we got the links for Katie in the description. Got the links for the plot of Holics in the description. We'll be back talking to you guys next week.